Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy, and today Flash Forge released a major update for the Adventurer 5M series of 3D printers. So the next time you turn on your printer, if it's connected to the internet, you're going to get a prompt to install the latest firmware. And then Flash Forge also released two new software applications to go along with that new firmware. We're gonna go over all of that in this video. But first, let me show you what you're gonna see the next time you turn on your printer to update the new firmware. You are gonna get this change log right here and here's some of the things that it does it's going to support the flash maker connection we'll talk about that in a second it's going to support the orca flash forge connection fixes a flash print slicing issues support multi-plate printing dot three mf files support the exclude objects function add pid calibration add confirmation pop-up for multi-select copy and delete functions add a LAN mode optimize UI, optimize the static IP function and other bug fixes. So if you're curious about this add PID calibration and what that does, you can find that in the settings option. It's gonna be in the same place where you can do a leveling test and then set the vibration compensation. So the PID calibration is going to uh, try to make sure that your hot end stays at a very specific and precise temperature to help eliminate any print imperfections that might happen as the result of of the temperature fluctuating in the hot end. So that's just gonna to help to stabilize things a bit. Updating is real simple. You just say, okay, it's gonna do it quickly. You restart the printer and everything will be good to go. I was trying to see if I can find anything that was really different about the UI. I did notice that the boxes for the bed temperature and the hot end, they are a little bit bigger than they were before, but for the most part, everything is still the same. They just made those boxes a little bit bigger. It might be some other little changes here and there, but it was nothing major. But now let's talk about this new software that they have. Now here is, the two things that you're going to be able to download and try out today. The first is called Flash Maker, and that is a mobile application for iOS and Android devices. So this is going to be for remote controlling the printer directly from your phone. As it says here, you're going to effortlessly control, monitor, and manage printers by group all in one place. These updates seem um, very well suited for people who have multiple printers of the 5M series. If you got like a print farm going on, you'll be able to control all of those printers remotely in a couple of different ways. Now you will need to set up an account in order to use FlashMaker, but once you do, you'll be able to monitor all of your printers. You can check out a live video feed for it. You'll be able to change the hot end temperature and the bed temperature from that. So, you know, it's just remote monitoring. So that's an option that you'll be able to do. And then the second piece of software that's brand new here is Orca Flash Forge. And Orca Flash Forge is a fork of Orca Slicer. So they basically created their own version of Orca Slicer, kind of like what Elegoo does with Cura. You've got Elegoo, Elegoo Cura, and then you have the regular Cura. This is kind of like the exact same thing. And it also lets you do remote management. You can view your webcam for your printer directly inside of Orca Slicer. You'll be able to group your printers according to however you wanna group them if you have multiple different printers. And then you'll be able to also control the printer directly from the Orca Flash Forge app as well. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at that new app. This is the new Orca Flash Forge app. And if you use Orca Slicer before, you look at it and say, well, this looks exactly like Orca Slicer because it is, it's based on Orca Slicer. But some differences that I immediately noticed is that when you go to set this up, they now have profiles for every nozzle that's available for the 5M series, including the 0.25 nozzle and the 0.8 nozzle. Previously, they just had the 0.4 and the 0.6 nozzle profiles for Orca Slicer. But inside of this new version, this Flash Forge Orca Slicer offshoot, they now include profiles for all of those nozzle sizes. So that is a good thing to have. And then they also have their profiles for the different filament that you're gonna be using. I just have a few selected here. High speed PLA, PETG, Silk, um, we can actually take a look at that real quick. And here are all of the filament options that are available that you can just check and add it to your collection. So here's some PETG. We've also got some PLA carbon fiber, PVA. So you can add all of these and they all have their own uh, Flash Forge created profile specifically for that. So if you did not have a profile for your 
two point, your 0 0.25 or your 0 0.8 nozzle, here is how you can get it. Now, the other features are pretty much the same because it's Orca Slicer, really. But I did see on Facebook, someone said that this version of Orca Slicer is based on version 1.7.7, .7, and that means that any new updates or enhancements that have been done since then are most likely not gonna be present inside of this Orca Flash Forge app. I'm not sure how to confirm what version of, flat, of um, Orca Slicer this is based on, but if you know how to do that, um, if you could look that up and then just leave a comment to confirm the version of Orca Slicer that this is based on so that we can have a secondary confirmation of that. But if I go down here to the help menu and I just do the about, it just says version 1.0 for Orca Flash Forge. So let's just see what um, version Orca Slicer is underneath all of this. So we'll know, so we'll know what kind of features are not going to be present because of that. But other than that, everything, if you've been using Orca Slicer before, it's all the same. Now let's take a look at the device tab. Here you're going to be able to add your printer and by the way if you are having trouble doing it just check the IP address for the printer on the printer because it probably changed. I know that mine's changed and I just had to update it and then I'm able to uh, look at it. So my printer is on right now and you can see here it's idling at 21 degrees Celsius for the hot end. It's at 19 degrees Celsius for the bed and this part over here here, I'm not sure what this is because I can't alter the temperature for this, but I can alter the temperature for the hot end and for the bed. Another thing that caught my attention is right here, material station. It's unconnected, but I have no idea what the material station is, and I don't want to get ahead of myself. I don't know if this is a device that was previously released from Flash Forge, or is this foreboding an upcoming release for a material station? I don't know, but it is right there. So I thought that that would be something that's interesting to point out. And then down here, this is a fan icon. You'll be able to start filtering internal circulate or external circulate. Over here is going to be for lights, if you have that, and that's going to be a, a 5M Pro kind of a thing. And then this is where all your printer information is going to be right here. And over here in this black box, if you have a camera connected, you'll be able to press the play button and then you'll be able to see your camera in real time. I think the lens cover is on my camera. That's why everything is black right there. And if you choose to get more devices, once you connect them to your network, you'll be able to access them here from this device tab. They are going to pop up and you'll be able to filter them by group, by status, or by machine type. So, you know, this is great for people who have, you know, like print farms or just, you know, multiple printers in general. You'll be able to do that right here if you do have more than one printer. So here's what it looks like when you're actually printing something. I know that the webcam positioning is not the best, but you get the idea. But then you also are gonna be able to get the file name up here. And this is not the Nuka-Cola vending machine. That's just what the file was going to be before I changed it. But you can see that the remaining time is two hours and 14 minutes. I can pause it, I can cancel it, and I can adjust the temperatures as I see fit. But one of the best features in this Flash Forge version of Orca Slicer that I have run into is when you go to print plate, you are able to level the bed before the print starts. I have been waiting for this ever since I got this printer. So you no longer have to upload it to the printer and then go to it manually and select the leveling function. You can now do it completely remotely through this app. That is absolutely amazing. I'm so glad that Flashforge has implemented this feature. But other than that, everything else is just basic Orca Slicer. And I don't know what this means for Flash Print, but if you're still using Flash Print, it's probably a good idea to move on over to Orca Slicer um, because that's where Flashforge's attention seems to be these days. And you know, it just doesn't hurt to you know learn another slicer in general. And it gives you more features than, than uh, Flash Print does. So probably a good idea to take a look at that whenever and if you are ready to do so. But 
it. Yeah, that is the major update for the FlashForge Adventure 5M 3D printers. It's great to be able to have more control over the printer. Um, it's great to see that FlashForge is continuing to support this, but I'm really curious to know what this material station option is about. It would be great if a multicolor printing solution were to come to the FlashForge Adventure 5M series of printers and even some of the older printers if possible, and that would definitely, definitely make this printer one of the top choices for anyone looking for an affordable and darn good 3D printer right now. So that's all for now. If you run across any other changes with this update, please let us know down in the comments so that we can check it out and be informed. And also remember to check out the Adventure 5M playlist that I've created here so that you can see all the previous videos that I've done and then keep track of all the newer videos that I do in the future. All right, so till then, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.